Now, of course, Terrence Crawford came out and he had the sleepy emojis, you know, saying the fight was a little boring. And of course, Terrence won the smoke. Now, Danny Garcia, before the fight, he said that he the A-side. He said that the ball is in his court. So that being said, after the fight, he said they're going to put him higher on the rankings for the WBO and make him seem like he done ducking Terrence Crawford. Now, I don't see how that's a bad thing for them to put you higher on the rankings because we do want to see that fight. So what do you think about a potential matchup between the two? I mean, Crawford saying he wasn't too impressed with Danny Garcia's performance. And um, what's your thought on that fight? Because oh. I, I, I just want to mention this real quick because I, I found it interesting what Dante said. He said that Danny Garcia basically... Uh, he kind of step up to the level of his opposition. So if yeah. you're fighting a better fighter, he will perform better. He will step up when the time is right. Now, what you but think he about also lowers his, his standards as too. well when yeah. he fighting somebody like Red Cash? Our so Herrera. first of all, what you think about that comment in particular about Dante and a potential fight between Crawford and Danny Garcia and Danny Garcia past statements? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with um, the... Dante reference and then go into the actual matchup between Crawford and Garcia. So I, I think that's true. I, I think that's true of a lot of fighters. It's just when you have a big matchup and you just get motivated for that. And then one, one of the greatest motivators is fear, right? So when you have an opponent that you know <laughs> could possibly sleep you or is at the top of the game, then you're, you're going to make sure that you don't miss any workouts, that you're getting up, you're, you're running, you're doing two-a-days, you're doing three-a-days, uh, you get your diet on point, because you know that there's this, right, um, there's this d disaster that may be waiting for you if you don't, ooh, ooh, ooh. well, don't, don't do that. Don't fire that off. Let me hold that for you while you do the that. Strap. But, uh, Man, the strap. I'm sorry for cutting but, you off. Uh, with, with that said, um, I think that Garcia is going to try everything in his power to stay away from Crawford. I think Crawford washes him. Um, I, I can't say stop because I, I, I don't think Danny's even been dropped before. Even with, I, I'm trying to go back. I'm oh, that, Danny sure. has one of the best chins. He, ha he has a good chin, but I still think that Crawford takes it to him. But it, it, it will be interesting because we know that Crawford does get hit. Um, but to me, it doesn't seem like Danny wants that fight. I mean, so yeah. he, he he obviously called out Pacquiao and Errol Spence, and um, ostensibly the red catch fight was uh, basically let me sh show you how I look against a good left hander, and then just kind of work on some certain things. Um, you know, the straight right, of course, is the best punch. I I, I think the combo was straight right left hand. And, of course, we know Danny Garcia packs a lot of punch. I mean, a lot of power in his left hook. Um, but a, those fights are, I mean, I think everybody wants those fights. I mean, we, you're talking about, well, if you go ask any welterweight, um, because a lot of them are with PBC. So that might, so I, I'm not saying that they're avoiding Terrence Crawford, but his name doesn't get brought up a lot. But mostly, if you talk to Sean Porter, oh, man, it's just Errol Spence or Manny Pacquiao. You talk to Danny Garcia, or Errol Spencer, like Danny Pacquiao. Even like Mikey Garcia, he already fought Spence, so now it's like, well, I want Pacquiao. Like, those are the two people that people want to fight. So, of course, yeah. those are the names that are going to call out. But Crawford should be one of those guys, too, because Crawford is the man. You know what I'm saying? Crawford is pound for pound number one. Obviously, when Floyd Mayweather was pound for pound number one, everybody was gunning for him for different reasons because he was the money man of the division yeah. and of boxing, period. But my, the main point is... People should want Crawford position, and that's just not even his strap, just his position of being pound for pound number one, a top pound for pound, even top three, you know what I'm saying? So that being said, I think Danny's not too in interested in Crawford because of stylistically, yeah. it doesn't favor him. Now, Danny Garcia, outside looking in, you think he's basic, you think he's not that effective, but he is. He do things right. He do the basic things right. It works for him. He has good attributes, like, you know, good chin. Matter of fact, great chin, good power, good speed, uh, great boxing IQ, good counter puncher. So he brings a lot of that to the table. But against Crawford, he's an elite level fighter. Yeah. That makes all of that just look like 
seem normal to him. You know what I'm saying? So Crawford has the hand speed advantage, the IQ advantage, figuring you out advantage. Now he gonna get hit, <laughs> but he gonna definitely be hitting Danny Garcia way more than he, you know, he receiving. So he gonna be giving it to Danny more than he taking it. That's just my opinion on the whole I matter. Think that he would, I think that he would outclass Danny Garcia. I mean, it, it, it'll be a good look for Terrence Crawford. It'll just kind of silence. I, I don't know if there's a lot of crazy, but he, a lot of people, and I, I might be part of them, say that he hasn't really had a quality win at 147. Uh, Jeff Horn, um, withstanding, not, notwithstanding Jeff Horn. But uh, I think it would be a good look. And if he stops Danny Garcia, I mean, that will put the, the welterweight division on notice. Who, who, who stops Danny Garcia? If um, Crawford stops. I mean, I don't think he'll get that fight. But the, only way, the only way you can stop Danny Garcia is to the body. You know, Danny is so good that, like, you know, with his chin and the fact that he has good defense – and always in, in position to counter, it's hard to, you know, um, basically, you know, put a hern on him and take him out. Yeah. But one thing for sure, Danny Garcia is a little vulnerable to the body, you know. Like, it yeah. seemed that he kind of be, you know, he a little vulnerable to the body. So that's the way to go if you're planning it, on yeah. stopping uh, Danny Garcia. So the best bet is Errol Spence. So on to the next Maybe. round. Well, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, let, let, b b before I, I ding it, um, usually don't do this, but I, you know, if it's some good comments, because we, we do want to respect the super chat. But um, Pedo Frescobar talked about um, Bud footwork is superb to Danny's, which is obviously true. And Leonard Thomas thinks that his power is overrated. Um, I think that's a debate. I think that's d um, debatable. debatable at, who, at who's, who said that the footwork? Um, Pedo Frescobar. Yeah, well, that's a great point. I just want to talk about that a little bit. As far as the footwork, you got to keep in mind that Danny's stuck in the mud. He's stuck in if, the mud. If you circle him, he has to always, you know, move his front foot, you know. So that's one thing that doesn't benefit Danny. Danny, if he had footwork, he'd be one of the best in the game. I'm talking about yeah. the elite level. He already one of the best in the game, but I'm talking about the elite level today. So that being said, no, he, he, against he, the Crawford, he's a bit of a Frankenstein. And yeah, against Crawford, that's gonna hurt him because I remember when he was fighting Red Catch, he will throw a right hand and switch to a southpaw, and it kind of gave me it's like a reminiscence like a of double, Floyd double Mayweather. Right remember yeah. when Floyd Mayweather would switch to southpaw against Zab after throwing the right hand just to kind of for defense and then come back with a left hook. Danny would not follow up with a left hook, and it's against the Red Catch. So you would think like. Even if you get countered, it's okay because it's a red catch. But he still didn't let that left hook go. I'm not too sure what he was seeing. I felt like the left hook was there, you know. I just, but I, I just think his footwork doesn't allow him to like to I be mean, able to even do footwork, that. He, yeah, yeah, footwork yeah, yeah, wise, yeah, he was yeah, your, your footwork. I, I don't because what what he would do is he would throw the right and kind of like step and then kind of like follow up so it'd be yeah. this kind of double. But, but like, he should go come back but, with but, a hook. Yeah, but he he's he's kind of out of position from there depending on like red catch. And you have to be like, you have to have very intricate footwork to do that. And then plus, I I, I, I told you when he was doing that, he was straight up, right? So when, when, when Floyd was doing that against Zab, yeah, he would duck down he would kind of hit and then he would like fall to the side because he was like, he would get, when Danny Garcia was doing that, he was straight up. I, and remember I said that during the fight, I was like, yeah. man, like okay, if he does that against an elite fighter, he's going to get clocked because he's straight, he's standing straight up. So all of this is exposed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So call in. I just dropped the number. Um, all the people that want to debate, call in. And for the people in the super chat, you know, if y'all got any questions, just uh, drop a super chat and we definitely talk about it. Now, um, just, so to wrap it up, appreciate y'all for tuning in. We had technical difficulties this um, episode. Obviously, we were supposed to be live yesterday, but YouTube part, they had a couple issues. I don't know what happened, but regardless of that, we are here today and we made it happen. Of course, subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about them and if you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these casual fans. Obviously, on Split Decision, we offer the book of the truth. So if you do open the book, that's what you get is actually, uh, you know, Split Decision, where we speak about the truth and nothing but the truth. So um, click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post or go live. Of course, to the left in the blue corner, no other than Professor Nim to the right on the red corner is our key. 
Uh, Professor Nim, uh, le, you yeah, know, let yeah, us yeah, out. Only thing I want to say is, if you real men out there, well, real men and women, is put your d- guns down. Put your gloves up. And Let's that's get the it, theme but, and we of out. our key. So keep in mind that, um, like I said, um, you know, all the Canelo fans, I want y'all to call in, man. We didn't get y'all to call in today. What's up? We, you know, we want all the smoke, but we want all the love as well. Appreciate all my Akis. I don't say this enough. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I truly mean it. And um, uh, may uh, uh, Kobe Bryant rest in peace. Gigi, his yes, daughter. Sir. Um I feel sorry for his family. My condolences goes out to them. And peace and we out. We out.